G'day, Roger McRail with the Victorian Serrated Tussock Working Party. Um, I act as an extension officer for the, the group. It's easy to see serrated tussock in this sort of context against the native power grasses. The colour is quite distinct. But then the question is, how do you see serrated tussock on a landscape like this behind us? Well, there's a number of characteristics about the plant which really quite stand out readily. Uh, the texture of the leaf and the, the form of the plant, the texture is quite fine uh, compared with the native tussock which has a much broader leaf. This uh, serrated tussock stays upright even as a young plant. It'll start growing straight up. If it's cut off, it stays straight upright, more or less. Uh, the, the, color, the tone of the green varies uh, compared with the context plants. It, it's actually quite distinct, although it can change a little bit over the season. In late spring, coming into summer, when the plant's been actively growing, it's quite a bright green. Most of the plant will be green. It'll have lost any of the old growth, which will tend to fall away and it stands out against the context in that regard. It's actually a different shade of green from the, the plants nearby, which you can get your eye in for and see it from quite a distance. In the cooler months, uh, the winter months, frost can actually bleach off the whole top of the plant. There's a little bit of this hay coloured material in the top of these plants to give you an idea, but the whole plant nearly can go that sort of colour with a little bit of green at the base. After the, the, the bright green of a late spring into summer the the seeds start to appear inside the the sward of the the grass they have an almost purple tinge it's a, a rusty coppery sort of purple tone the seeds will uh, the seed head will end up weeping over beside the plant and dry out to almost this hay type color behind me there's some old seed heads from previous season the what the main mode of spread is by the wind the whole seed head comes off and travels across the landscape and especially from an elevated place like this it can go a long way. Another feature of the plant which really stands out because of the fine nature of the leaf and the way they're really tightly uh, packed as a tussock it's quite a fuzzy look and it, it, the texture of the plant really stands out at a, at a distance. There are a couple of uh, plants that grow in the same sort of context as serrated tussock which can be confused for it, some look-alikes. The serrated tussock here on my right hand um, has uh, a very similar leaf uh, width and profile to this wallaby grass that I've got on my left. If you look closely, uh, you'll see that the, the wallaby grass has hairs up the leaf. The serrated tussock doesn't. It has fine serrations that if you run your fingers down the leaf, you'll feel it raspy. Some natives can have that characteristic too. So the fact that the serrated tussock leaf rolls like a needle between your fingers, and it's about the diameter of a needle, um, is quite uh, a good indicator that that's what you've got, especially when it's not uh, hairy like the, the wallaby grass. The wallaby grass too isn't as well rounded. You can feel a bit of a clunkiness when you roll it between your fingers compared with the smooth serrated tussock. And if you look closely, it's got a, um, a central fold to the leaf on this species. The serrated tussock's really quite well rounded. Yeah, yeah especially when you have no seed heads on the plants, looking at the leaf, a, a really key determinant is that this, it's tightly rolled and so it rolls like a needle between your fingers quite smoothly. Whereas some of the native species feel more like you've got an HB pencil between your fingers and it's got the, those sort of edges that you can feel um, turning over in your hand. So we've got two species here which uh, fairly regularly grow in a similar sort of environment and people can get confused because they've got they've both got a very tussocky form so they, they clump together as a, a group of a grass but you can see between the uh, the poa tussock here, the silver tussock, poa labellatieri, and the serrated tussock, the leaf width is really quite distinct. The poa is very much broader, it's quite flat, it doesn't roll between my fingers. The serrated tussock does quite readily. The tone of the green is usually distinct. Um, even though the colour of the individual plant can change over the season, there's always a difference between the two. So we can pick them apart in the paddock quite readily. And the seed head of the serrated tussock is very wispy, it weeps over and it'll blow off the plant and um, like that, disappear across the landscape, uh, usually around Christmas time. 
Whereas the, the, the poa tussock holds its seed head all year round, the seeds will drop out of the head and you'll have a, a per persistently upright seed head remaining on the plant. If you see those things, then you can very quickly uh, tell one from the other, but they can grow right next to and even almost on top of each other. So in front of us, we've got the, the two uh, most common nacella grasses in this area, which is the serrated tussock with the, the very fine leaf and the Chilean needle grass, which has quite a flat leaf blade, which doesn't roll readily between the fingers and is very much thicker and broader than this one. Um, the, the serrated tussocks, again, rolling like the needle between the fingers. The seeds on the serrated tussock are a very small oop, article with a wispy seed head. Each of the seeds is tiny and has the tail coming off the back of it. With the Chilean needle grass, a much, much bigger seed, more like a spear grass seed with the ring between the seed body and the tail, which is the awn. So the two seeds are really quite easily distinguishable, but we don't want either of these species. We're focusing on managing the serrated tussock, but it's a good thing to get rid of this Chilean needle grass at the same time as much as possible. The, the Chilean needle grass seeds can cause serious injuries to stock. They'll bore into um, the hide of an animal and can actually degrade a carcass at market through bruising. Um, the serrated tussock is a lower food value for stock. It's really low in um, available energy. It's high in fibre, uh, more so even than the Chilean, but neither of these are desirable. Serrated tussock can be really quite distinct and obvious, but it isn't always. So if you have some plants where you're not sure of the ID, even after looking at the distinguishing features that we've uh, identified for you here, send us a photo. The, Ser the Serrated Tussock Working Party are here to help. We want to be able to engage with people to build the capacity for you to get on top of this weed before it gets on top of your production. So what we want you to take away from this video today is the key characteristics of Serrated Tussock, which is the fine leaf, which rolls like a needle, the persistently erect shape of the plant, which has quite a distinct shade of green um, when compared with the context. The character of the plant in the landscape is that uh, denser, uh, very upright, packed tussock shape. The seed head's very wispy. It comes off in, around Christmas and blows around the landscape. Each of the seeds has a tail coming off it, called an awn, and it's, they're relatively small. So if you think you've got serrated tussock, look for those key characteristics. If you're still not sure, send us a photo. But go to our website to look for more information about options for control and talk to your local community too. The land care groups can be really great support for then understanding uh, replacement strategies, getting something desirable going in your context to stop this weed from persisting. Mm -hmm.